Hello. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Lejeune Montgomery Tabron. I'm the president and CEO of the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. Today, we've gathered the leaders of nine organizations that work together to promote racial equity, advance racial healing, and bridge divides for our children and future generations. Their voices affirm the importance of protecting the right to vote in our communities and providing resources so everyone can vote. Ensuring all Americans have a say in their government and future is essential so that all families and children can thrive. But we know there are those who work just as hard to convince some people that their vote isn't worth casting. And that's why we're here. Voting is critical. Making a plan to vote right now is absolutely essential. On that note, I'd like to begin our conversation. So let's get into it. This year, how can voters of color make sure their voices are heard at the ballot box? Given the stakes of this election, it is so important that voters make a plan now about how you're going to vote, make sure you're registered, in many states, uh, voting has already started, either by mail or through early voting, depending on the state you live in. So the most important thing people can do right now is actually make a plan about how you're going to vote. There are few facts to consider. Voting right issues are not a thing of the past. And even though Americans and indigenous Americans are not shy to tell their stories during this period, we still need to show up at the polls. The data shows us right now, in Indian country alone, we have an estimated 1.2 million unregistered Native voters. We should not stop short of making real changes in such a great moment of this movement. The story in 2020 isn't about who took to the streets. It's going to be about who took to the polls. Thank you, Kevin. I want to move now to uh, a, a question that I think many of us have heard uh, recently. Um, there are so many ways to affect change, and we're seeing it today. We're seeing protesting, boycotting, uh, donating, all ways of expression. Why should voting and making a plan be a priority for a younger voter, especially. Hmm. Glenn, would you like to respond to that question? I'd love to. Thank you, Lejeune. One of the things we know for, from certain, uh, from the polling that we've done with young Black, Indigenous, Latinx, and Asian and Pacific Islander youth is that race and racism and racial justice is their number one concern. And make no mistake about it, it is a call for us to get real about what's possible. And so part of the reason it's so important, I think, for young po folks in this moment to lean in is the clarity that, in fact, racial justice is not possible without a just democratic society. And that, in fact, a just democratic society is not possible without racial justice. And that's why we are at Race Board are so committed to the idea that together we vote. Together, we create the possibility for the world that we all want to see. For young people, what is, what is really important is that young people have always been at the forefront of change in this country. Uh, if you look at the civil rights movement, young people were on the front lines. Uh, and that's not just Black young people. <laughs> that's uh, Latinx young people also, um, students who took to the streets to protest 
the inequities in their schools. Young people were the folks who were marching in the streets for March for Our Lives. And so this is a moment for young people to lean into the power that they have. They are the ones who are on the streets in the middle of a pandemic, putting their lives on the line because they know that racial justice issues are very important. They are critical, not only to their own lives, but to our country, to bringing us together, to unity. Absolutely. You know, the beautiful thing about movements is intergenerational. Movements are built on the energy of young people, the wisdom of elders. And the other beautiful thing about movements is when young people get the understanding that protests may be necessary, but it's not sufficient for the change that we're seeking. Many Americans, uh, particularly people of color and young people, feel disillusioned about our system of government. They doubt their vote will make a real difference at all. Uh, so what would you say to anyone who feels their vote won't matter? How does your organization reach out to voters of color, young people, and other key demographics to convince them that their vote will matter? And what resources does your organization offer? Yeah, so first of all, let me thank you, Ajun, for your incredible leadership. Always great to be with all of our colleagues. I think we have to acknowledge that there's legitimacy uh, from people who feel their vote doesn't count. But let's recall the many elections, including the 2016 election, that was decided by a handful of votes. But we have to talk to people uh, and we have to meet people where they are. Uh, in this election cycle, we've launched our Reclaim Your Vote campaign. Young people made a difference and what they did has affected the America we live in today. This generation has a chance to be that woke generation that truly propels change. So we have to say to young people, the power is in your hands. The power is in your hands if you use it. And if you don't use it, someone else is going to use it. So powerful, Mark. Thank you. Uh, Kathy, would you like to add to that conversation? We have been always underscoring the importance that every vote matters in messaging for all of our communities, cross-racially as well as in the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander communities. And so this ability to connect these dots to say, yes, you raise your voice either in protest or in advocacy, but you also go to the ballot box or this year voting by mail um, is really, really critical. Whether it be text messaging or other social media, we have really found that those kinds of platforms are where a lot of younger people, uh, especially, are engaging and that's the way they can really make their voices heard. Thank you, Kathy. It's uh, very clear that every vote matters. What issues should voters be paying more attention to in their own communities right now? For us in the Latino community in particular, uh, we've seen issues that have impacted our community uh, that we can address when we vote. This vote in this election is not just a political one, it's personal. And we need to understand that we can each weigh in and we must weigh in by voting if we are eligible. The other side of this is the opportunity because our people, black and brown people with our white allies have come together in an unprecedented way in which we've come together around, not only around COVID, but around racism, where people in this country have unified around the idea that we have to end structural racism. America is not a perfect union. It is a perfecting union. And the way for it to perfect itself is through the instrument of democracy. Now, what is democracy really? Democracy says that every person matters that everyone counts, that we can begin to get things right. We can begin to address the problems. We can begin to come up with solutions that really work. And unless and until we do that, each and every one of us, we won't have the country that we, that we desire or the one that we deserve. Whenever people's backs are against the wall, 
they have two choices. They can turn and face the wall and retreat, or they can stand forward, link arms, move together towards a vision of a better and a brighter future. And always appreciate that this country is made up of all of us and race is a social construct. And that construct is, is the basis of power. And for us to address power, we must do away with that construct by making sure that social contract is upheld. What's at stake is an opportunity for all of us across our communities to push ever forward to make this nation that perfecting reality Alvin talked about so that we can truly live with a level of comfort and quality that our old people are cared for, our young people provided a, a, a prosperous future, and we protect the rights of the disadvantaged, however we define disadvantage. The American Indian population is the fastest growing population in the country, growing at 27% since the year 2000, compared to 9% with the rest of the country. So that means Indian country is getting younger. And our native youth, who will be our future leaders, our tribal leaders, our business leaders, our educators, really need to get involved and, and help shape the agenda for the world that they're going to live in, because this is the time to do it. This is one of the most important elections of our lifetime. It may be the most important election in their lifetime. And given the youthful age of Indian country, it's really important to get it right, right now. What do we need to do after the election? as we continue this work uh, that we are also uh, committed to. And I'll start with Janet. We need to make change in terms of how people's attitudes and thoughts about people of color, including addressing the original sin of slavery, how it has impacted us and will continue to impact us unless we achieve that ultimate reconciliation. I'm so grateful for all the other colleagues uh, on this panel and the great work that everybody is doing because th the work is not just about one election. It is about building the kind of long-term collective power that our communities need to drive this work, drive this vision of justice forward over the long run. It takes the kind of grassroots organizing, the kind of movement building, uh, the kind of policy ideas and uh, big reform strategies that are everyone in this panel are pushing forward. I think for folks listening, the biggest thing to remember is there is a better democracy, a more inclusive, equitable democracy that's possible that actually supports and empowers our communities to thrive. Thank you, Sibyl. What's the one step that you would recommend that voters do right now? Make a plan, apply to vote by mail, and make a plan. I would echo uh, Kathy, make a plan, but also help a friend make a plan. Don't be cynical today or between now and election day. Get educated about the candidates and talk to your family and community members about what matters most to you. Track your ballot because you can make sure whether that your ballot was counted. And if there was a problem with it, you're gonna have a period of time, it's usually around three days, to go and fix whatever that problem was because we wanna make sure that every vote gets counted. Promise yourself, this will not be the last thing you do to express your civic, your civic power and your voice. This is the beginning of many acts you will take in today and the days to come. We're gonna need all of us to do all that we can. So make a plan and make promise. And I would encourage you not only to make a plan for you to vote, but make a promise to get your neighbors, your family, your friends to do the same. Make a commitment, an absolute commitment. If you gotta ride a bike, a trike, don't let nobody, don't let no thing, don't let nothing stop you from fulfilling your commitment to vote. Thank you, Mark, and, and thank you, all of you. I am always so impressed by your work and particularly the work that you do together. Uh, your solidarity and how you all have grown to pursue the, the dream of one humanity in this nation has just been so impressive, and your work has been inspirational 
to us at the Kellogg Foundation. Young people and people of color have done so much for our democracy this year. You've had your voices heard and you've shown us what the future looks like in your hands. So much depends on voting. Our democracy, our communities, and our future. As we've discussed today, there are some powerful forces lined up against voters in this country, and particularly voters of color. And that's why it's absolutely essential to make a plan to vote this election year, as you've heard from our panelists. Together, we vote. Thank you. <laughs>